Welcome back to Miller's in Motion. If it's your first time here, I'm Ryan. My better half is Lauren. And together we sold our house and have just, within a matter of a month, moved into our Grand Design Solitude 390RK. But today we're gonna to talk about something that we could not find any information on. And that was RVing with large dogs, specifically three large dogs. There's a bunch of stuff on YouTube and the internet about RVing with dogs and it's mostly like, tie them up and you know make sure that you leash them when you walk them and that kind of stuff but we want to show you how we're working it out with essentially three dogs over 50 pounds one of them almost 100 pounds so it's been a challenge but we're gonna kind of take you around and show you what we do to care for them why we pick the rig we pick because of them and then how we transport so this morning we're actually headed up to McLean's RV to do a little post PDI month in service. Um, but because Lauren's got to go to work and I'm going to take the rig by myself, I have to take all three dogs with me. Now, I'm not going to lie, right out of the gates, that's challenging. Uh, they don't love being in the truck together, but we're getting over it and we're getting better. So uh, in fact, let's just jump in the truck and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. All right, well, we are in the truck and as you can see by a couple of heads behind me, uh, they sit right behind us. We have a uh, like a dog hammock that sits back there but i found one that actually goes all the way to the ground so they don't have to sit up on the on the bench um it's <laughs> it helps a lot with the hair they just all have to find a place once we get moving they're a lot better but in fact there's klondike and bailey and then mishka's kind of over there in the corner like i said as we get going they end up finding a place but let's uh let's get on up to mclean's Spoiler, I'm not really going to record anything on the way up because it's a challenge enough towing this and I don't want to tow with the dogs just by myself. Lauren here, we'd record. So as you can tell by the lack of noise, um, once we get moving and we get on the highway, they really do settle in and that makes it a lot better. It's whenever we exit or stop or anything, they kind of get a little rambunctious because they want to get out and play and do all the things that dogs want to do. So. We haven't taken too many massively long trips except for the Gulfport, which the Gulfport trip was a little unique because Lauren took Bailey and Mishka and I had Klondike. And so we had to stop a handful of times for fuel and, and all that anyway because it was a 10 and a half hour drive. So it wasn't as big of a deal because Klondike had the whole back seat to himself. We are gonna have to limit how far we go when we travel like this, when all three of them are in the back seat of my truck and then Lauren's in the, in the front passenger. So something we have to absolutely consider uh, like the trip we're taking in a couple of weeks to new braunfels we're to be down there for about five days so we're only going to take the one truck there's no need for both we have to figure out what that line is for them before they get angry with each other all right we are all done at mclean's for the day only there for a few hours we're gonna have to take it back unfortunately but as far as the pups go they are champs they do so well you know we could complain about it a lot, but I pretty much asked them to just hang out in the truck and I left it on uh, and, and they did it and they didn't bitch. They didn't bark. They didn't go crazy when other people walked by. They just kind of hung out and slept and that's all I can really ask for. So we're really very lucky with these three dogs. They do for the most part uh, make it a lot easier than it could be. Still not easy 100% and we'll show you kind of why. There's a lot of things we do to help them out. So we're going to get the rig back to where we camp in Fort Worth. You comfortable? Is that the spot? Who wouldn't want to take that with the Marvian? Well, all right. Well, after a uh, interesting visit to McLean's, the dogs, by the way, did great. The rig, not as good. <laughs> um, uh, we got back, but we have a few issues going on that we'll talk about in a, another video about mainly our bedroom slide, but, um, we <laughs> Lauren's playing with Mishka and she's growling, but we, um, we got back and had to deal with a bunch of stuff. And so unfortunately I stopped recording yesterday. So it's the next morning, uh, but typically our morning routine is we kind of get up and grab the pups. So we either take them on a walk or we bring them down here to this dog park. Hi Lauren. And this is where we kind of do our morning routine. If we have some extra time, like today's a Saturday, we do. And they run around and play and 
but we've talked about this in one of other videos, but one of the biggest perks of why we like this park so much for when we're in Fort Worth is that view right behind us. And I'm standing in the middle of the dog park. So for us with three large dogs, it's not necessarily a necessity, but it helps a lot because this dog park is just big enough. Well, in fact, let me go to one corner. So I'm back at the main entrance in the far corner now, and you can see, I mean, how big this dog park runs all the way down there. You can see Lauren and Mishka. They're still not, there's still another 30, 40 feet to the other end. So the nice thing about this, if you have large dogs and especially us with Mishka, who's a Samoyed, she's really, really athletic. She can really open up in here, which is great. Klondike, thanks for leaving because I'm standing over here. <laughs> um, and that's why we like this dog park so much. There's another dog park in this, but it's nowhere. It's more of a square. And so it's harder for her to open up. Also, as a side note, we're still on the waiting list. So right now we're on phase one of this and there's another phase. These are all the newer sites and they back up to that. Well, it's not as good of you right here, but uh, that little quarry lake thing that's back there. Um, it seems like at the beginning of the month, we're gonna move to one of these spots right here, which would be great because that's just more time that they can spend down here in this huge dog park. The biggest adjustment, especially in the mornings um, from being in the house to being out here it is pretty much that we have to actually, I'm going to say deal with the dogs and I don't mean it like that, but we can't just open a door and let them out and go run. We need to put them on a leash and take them on a walk, hike, land, hike. <laughs> um, we put them on a leash, take them on a walk or bring them down here, but we have to be present with them. Whereas we could let them outside for an hour in the morning at the house and not really worry too much about it. So... So we have this fun little switcheroo we do. Lauren takes Bailey, I take Klondike. And the reason is Klondike needs a ramp. <laughs> and it's funny how dogs and people, me too, I'm just not on camera at the moment, are creatures of habit and structure matters a lot. Mishka always, we try to get Mishka to get her drink first, but she gets distracted very easily. And this is when we get back. And then Bailey goes, Klondike gets to go last because Klondike needs the ramp. And it's a lot easier to let the girls go in and Lauren. And then whilst Klondike is getting his drink, I set his ramp up and there we go. Also, if you have multiple larger dogs, sometimes leashes are just too long. That's great if we're like out here and we have leads that we can tie to the thing and let them go 20, 30 feet away if we want to. But we were at a horse show and I couldn't tell you if this is a brand that anybody actually carries in pet stores or not. But Lauren found these leashes that are, what are they, four feet, three feet? Four feet. Um, but they're really, really thick, and they're essentially, if you've ever been around a horse, it's like a lead rope. Um, but they're a little bit shorter, and so for the bigger dogs, it's handy because they can't get too far away. Um, especially the longer the leash, the more vulnerable the leash is. You got a brand? It says Tory Leather Company. So we actually bought that when Mishka chewed through. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored but open to it because we go through leashes. Now that the girls are in, you can see this ramp and this ramp is from PetSafe. Um, I will link it in the description. I don't remember exactly the model, uh, but this has been super handy for him because he's an older dog. His, his back hips just don't work as well as they used to. Um, being a bigger dog, he's overweight for a while. Uh, and, and just going up the stairs, it's really hard for him. Uh, we even did at one point retrofit the stairs and that was in one of our moving all the things into the rig video, we talked about that. Um, we've since taken those off because they got dirty really fast um, and switched to this ramp. And he's gotten to the point where he'll actually go up on his own now and, and gotten pretty good about it. Call him. There you go. Good boy. And after we get in, they kind of all collapse and Mishka after the morning run is pretty much ready for breakfast at this point. And we're back on the big camera. I greatly prefer this. It's actually easier to vlog on and do that. I can't believe I just said vlog out loud. It's actually a lot easier to shoot on this camera than your phone. It doesn't fog up as much. Uh, it's, yeah, I prefer it. It's more of a nuisance in public, but I greatly prefer it. So next on the routine, Lauren will typically start getting ready, which is what she's doing at the moment. And I will start feeding all of the heathens, which is all kinds of fun. So one of the upgrades we did to our rig is on this side of the sink, we installed the slide out and that's just our trash can. But 
One of the reasons why we like the 390 RK from Grand Design, the Solitude, so much is, again, just all the storage in the kitchen. But it allowed us, to the other side of the sink, to store dog bowls, pills, just medical supplies, things that we keep for the dogs right here. And then down here, as Mishka's very excited about, we have the exact same setup, but what we did is we put dog food in it and their scoop. So it allows us easy access to their food when we do get ready to feed them. Just kind of goes a long way. So we're gonna let chaos rain now. Sit. Good. Bailey, sit. Sit down. Okay, go ahead. On it. Over here. Here you go. There you go. So the dogs are really pretty good about finding their places. The wild card is Klondike. Um, he didn't used to be able to do these stairs right here uh, that come up into the kitchen, but he has since been able to do them. And sometimes he likes to come up here. Also, if you notice in the background, we don't have our chairs up here at the moment on our ledge, which everything's kind of just all over the place. But um, we actually don't have them right at the moment because Mishka has been crate trained at the house and because she's a rescue, we're undoing a lot of bad things that she learned when she was, you know, her first year and a half of life since we got her. Um, we've been progressively letting her out more, so it all depends on how long we're gonna be gone uh, and kind of what's the mood like for the day, whether or not she goes into a crate. Because we moved the rig yesterday though, the crate's actually in Lauren's truck, um, along with some other things and our chairs are just below. The intent is to put the chairs back and get Mishka out of the crate, but she has to prove herself first so she doesn't destroy the rig. Also, you notice Mishka has this puzzle bowl of that purple color. Uh, and then Bailey also has one right there. They require those because they eat too fast and we were worried they were gonna choke. So all that does is slow them down a little bit. Plus it entertains her brain, which is never a bad thing. This is by far one of the smartest dogs we've ever had, which is terrifying. Okay, well, fast forward a few hours. It's now the evening. You know, during the day, the dogs just kind of hang out in the rig. If we're outside, they go with us. If we're working during the week or uh, we have somewhere to be, they just hang out in the rig. We've been testing, testing Mishka in and out of her, um, her crate, so we're, we're working on that. Um, she's getting better about it, but we still do need it occasionally for longer periods of time. Um, but I really quickly wanted to go through some of the stuff in the rig that makes our lives a lot easier. So you you have already seen their crate and how we feed them and all that. That's the same routine for dinner, just a few less pills. Um, but let's walk around the rig real quick and let me show you some of the things that have helped us out a lot. Okay, so first out of the gate, Bailey's laying on it. But uh, this is a full couch slip cover. Um, it's a little bigger than our RV couch, but it seems to work pretty good. We had one of those like throws you just kind of put over it. And it worked okay, but every time they'd jump up and down, it would fall down off the back. This is elastic and goes all the way around. So it goes all the way down the back. Uh, it comes with like little foam dowels that you shove in here. It's been up for like three days now and it's barely moved. So far it's great. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's protecting the couch. And this one happens to be completely waterproof. Secondly, right behind Klondike, hi Klondike. So that, um, the, these things started to pop up on our Facebook feeds because Alexa's always listening. And this is, it was called a muddy mat, but uh, the people that, uh, there's, there's one called a Gorilla Grip. Um, that's the one we picked because the sizes seem to work a little bit better. But, hang on, let me move Klondike. Klondike's been moved, sorry it's a little dirty, but, um, but it's, it's a long form thing and it's got some grip on the other side so it doesn't slip around. But it's really meant to help with, as they walk in and out, um, like Mishka's walking past right now, a, it's soft, but B, it also is super absorbent. So if their feet are wet or something, it really does actually help cut down the amount of kind of grime and stuff that they track in. We still vacuum like every other day, like, well, not every other day, like every day, minimum, sometimes twice. Um, but especially if it's muddy or we're on a dirt site, it does actually help very much. We have another one of these up here, but as you can see, our bed slide is in. Uh, at the moment, <laughs> our slide is seized, so uh, that's something we're working on that you'll see in a future video, but normally we lay one down right in front of the bed uh, when it's slid out as well. All right, so that's our main door, but when you first walk in, up here is like our controls for everything. Turn that off. Um, right beneath it, most people, this is a coat closet. We've actually retrofitted ours, so it's got our 
one touch control in it. Um, it also has our breaker. And as you can tell by the excitement from all the animals, this is where Lauren keeps some of their like treats that they get right before nighttime. Uh, we also have hung up all of their leashes and collars and everything. Uh, each dog has their own because they all wear slightly different size stuff. And then this is something we had in the house too. It's really hard to see. Um, but what you do is we take like grocery bags, we shove them in there. So when we go on walks, we just grab a few of those out um, so that we can pick up after them. What's the number one favorite thing about having the dogs with us in the RV? That they get to see and do more. What's the number one negative about the dogs being in the RV? They're hairy. Oh, I forgot about all that. <laughs> they are very hairy. Especially that one. And that one. Hey. Surprisingly, that, that one. Shocker, all dogs are hairy. Very hairy. We vacuum a lot because of that. All right, so that's essentially what it's like to RV with three large dogs with us. I'm mm -hmm. sure we missed a few things here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, so please do us a favor. If, if we didn't answer a question you already have, or specifically that I had, mm -hmm. I tried to answer the questions that I didn't get answered when we first started this whole endeavor. Um, let us know in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer those questions, just like everything else that we shoot videos on. But overall, mm -hmm. we love having our dogs with us. I don't know that I can imagine our being without a dog in any capacity. No. Um, it's challenging with three, <laughs> especially if someone leaves town and someone's stuck at home. <laughs> with them um but it's doable but it's all in the training that's something i will tell you is that if your dogs are at your house and they're untrained they bark excessively at everything run rampant they yeah. pull really hard on a leash not mm -hmm. that's not magically going to change when you're on the road not at all so if you are looking to get on the road and you're still in the house and you want your dog to come with you start training now there's some mm -hmm. great dog training channels out there mm -hmm. we've listened to some of them um, especially the Caesar Milan one. I say, a tired dog is a good dog, so we always put exercise high yeah. on that priority list. So anyway, if you're considering getting out here with your dogs, we'd love to say hi to them. There's not a dog I don't think that she's in, not in love with. So uh, as always, we will see you next Sunday. Until then. Bye, Mom. Also, we're back for a brief moment. Mishka's waiting on her nightly treat. Now my wheels in motion in my window